Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. All right, we're continuing in our series, Are You Nuts for Nuggets? Nuts for Nuggets? Using Kevin's Mann's First Mention Study Bible. That's uh, Kevin Mann, M-A-N-N. Uh, Google it and get you one. Uh, it's a it's a real blessing. And hey, we're moving right along. Uh, I thought I didn't think I didn't think we were making progress, but uh, then I looked at where our bookmark is, and we're starting Esther. And man, we've we've hey, we've covered some. I I, I kind of was looking at this and man, we're never going to get done with this. But uh, uh, here we go. We're we are in Esther. So hey, you know what to do. Get you that good cup of mud, pull up a seat, and let's man up and go digging for some nuggets. But let's pray first. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the blood. Uh, thank you for eternal security. Thank you for our precious King James Bible. Thank you for Brother Kevin Mann and all the work he put into this thing. Uh, bless him and his ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're jumping in to the uh, nuggets in Esther. Esther is the 17th book of the Bible, the second book of the Bible named after a woman. All right. Uh, Vashti is a type of the Laodicean church that is removed or raptured, and a Jewish woman replaces her. Esther is Vashti's replacement. She is a type of the Jewish remnant that survives the tribulation period. God begins dealing with the Jews as soon as the bride of Christ, the church, is raptured. Um, Haman is a type of the Antichrist who is destroyed at the end and his ten sons fit the ten kings at, of the seven princes uh, of the tribulation. Mordecai is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. King Ahasuerus is a type of God the Father. Uh, facts and observations about uh, the book of Esther. Uh, the book of Esther covers a period of 13, watch the 13s, years during the reign of Ahasuerus, king of Persia, who controls the entire known world from India to Ethiopia. 127 provinces, of which only the last seven of those years uh, were during provinces, of which only the last seven of those years were during Esther's reign as queen. He ruled around 520 BC, approximately 85 years before the Jews were taken captive to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar. All right, in 606 BC. Esther has, here we go, seven main divisions, seven main characters, seven named princes, seven named chamberlains, seven royal items, and seven feasts. The word hanged appears seven times. There are 24 secondary characters named and 21 minor groups named. Uh, Esther 1, 20 and 21 gives the Bible believer a cause of rejoicing. We are told that the king, type of God, sent letters unto all the king's provinces, unto every province, according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. God has never failed to give his perfect, preserved, and inspired word and words to every people, tongue, and language throughout all human history. The King James A.V. 1611 is that perfect, preserved, and inspired word and words of God for the universal language of the end times, English. The letters from King Ahasuerus was uh, just as inspired in Syriac as they were in Aramaic or Hebrew or the Indian language or any and all of the 120... 27 provinces who received the king's letter. They were not lost, forgotten, mistranslated, misplaced, or vague. They were, thus saith the king Ahasuerus. If that is true of a fallen earthly king, 
how much more would it be true for the glorious God of heaven who promised to keep and preserve his word and words without error for all generations and forever. There is no excuse not to know or to wonder what the king decreed. You have a copy of his letter in your lap, or at least you can get a King James Bible from any dime store in America. There are 50 words that appear in Esther for the very first time in the Bible, 14 of which appear only in Esther and nowhere else in the Bible. Chapter 10 is the happily ever after chapter that will be reality after what seems to be the annihilation of the Jewish people uh, past 2010. The enemy of the Jews, the devil, is plotting and planning for their destruction, and he has a man at hand during all ages that he can step into and control just as he was there in the upper room during the Last Supper. As soon as he had permission to do so, he entered Judas Iscariot, who betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ to his murderers. But in the end, when everything is said and done, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, will totally annihilate Satan, the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the entire United Nations who are assembled in Israel this very minute, waiting for the go-ahead to begin what the Bible calls the time of Jacob's trouble. The Savior will be victorious. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. There are 13 people hanged in the book of Esther. They include the two chamberlains, Haman and Haman's ten sons. The 13th word in 9-1 is 13th. <laughs> the name of God is not mentioned in the book of Esther, neither in the book of Song of Solomon which is in line with the time which they both represent the end times of human history. The Laodicean lukewarm church age is the last age prior to the return of the Lord, and the civil and religious organizations are doing all they can to take God and every mention of him from the public domain. Esther 1.7, the word royal appears seven times, but specifies only seven different items that are named in the text. They are royal wine, a royal house, royal crown, royal commandment, royal estate, royal apparel, and royal throne. Esther 1.9, the name Vashti means beautiful, the Gentile queen, appears ten the Gentile number, times in Esther. Vashti is a type of the Gentile bride of Christ who apostatized to the point of open rebellion to the king as we are witnessing in the church age now and is removed, rapture at the end of the church age. Her replacement is the Jewish queen, Esther, who is a type of the wife of the Lord God Jehovah. The Lord begins dealing with the Jews again after the church, the Gentile bride is set aside. Esther 1, 10 through 12. Here we have the reigning Gentile queen apostatizing, just like the Laodicean church time, to the point where she refused to obey and has become rebellious, ineffective, and unresponsive to the king's command. She is hard-hearted and has become a stumbling block to those around her. She has become totally apostate, and she must be removed. She was the queen. Her job was to represent the kingdom of her husband with beauty, majesty, chasteness, sobriety, and grace. But just as the end-time church, she failed miserably and refused to accept and to live up to her responsibilities. The church in these last days has become hard-hearted, refusing to dress modestly, and appropriately, appropriately like a Christian should, refusing to assemble with other believers like a Christian or to show off the crown of grace that is paid for by her espoused husband, the Lord Jesus Christ. We have long since become unresponsive to the clear commands of Scripture for separation, 
consecration, and holiness. The king was wroth, and his anger burned in him. The king still expects his chaste virgin bride to obey his word. When the Gentile bride is removed, then God takes up new dealings with the Jews, represented by Esther, in the tribulation period. Esther 1, 21 and 22, when the king decrees his word to be published, then you can rest assured that it will be perfectly translated into every language under his empire without a hitch or a hiccup. How much more shall the words of the king of king and lords of lords, lord of lords, be perfectly translated and preserved without error into the language of his vast empire of humanity? Modern Bible-rejecting fundamentalists think that God is impotent and unable to keep his word inerrant and perfectly preserved, and I'm afraid they are going to be strongly rebuked by him at the judgment seat of Christ. Esther 2.2, 2, when Vashti, the church, is removed, that is raptured out, the virgins show up. See Revelation 7, where 144,000 flaming evangelists show up who have never known women. Esther 2.5, the first use of the word Jew in the scripture, and it appears seven times in the book in reference to Mordecai, who is a type of Christ. Esther 2.7, the first use of Hadassah, that is Esther, she is a type of the wife of Jehovah, the restored Jewish nation at the end of the church age, which is near to completion. Amen. Ah, more current than the six o'clock news, my friend. <laughs> Amen. Esther 3 1. After the church is removed and replaced by the Jewish wife, up shows Haman a type of the Antichrist. His name appears 50 times in the book. Notice that he does not show up until after the church is raptured out and the Jews are in prominence. Haman is revealed in what the Bible calls the time of Jacob's trouble, the Great Tribulation. Haman is said to be the Jews' enemy six times in the book, which is the number of the most wicked man to ever live the Antichrist. Boy, got some got some nuggets up here in Esther, amen? <laughs> amen. Um, Esther 3, 2, all the people bowed and reverenced Haman. Uh, Mordecai, as the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were delivered from the fiery furnace in Daniel, refused to bow, nor did him reverence. Um, in verse 3, Mordecai was asked, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? These words are found only one time in the entire Bible. Reverenced and transgressest. As the 3.7, Haman, as Judas Iscariot, controls the finances, just as the Antichrist will control the world economy. Esther 3.10, the king gives his ring to Haman, who is a type of the Antichrist. God gives the devil permission to persecute the Jews using Haman, the son of Hamadatha, and Aga the Agagite, the enemy of all Jews. 13 words, see 924, which is his complete title. This assures me that nothing is done to me that doesn't pass through the hand and watch care of God. Haman is said to be the Jews' enemy five times in Esther, five the number of death. Satan's desire first is to be worshipped, and secondly, to annihilate the Jews from the earth. Esther 3.13 The letters were sent to destroy the Jews and all they owned to be spoiled. The 26th word of the quote in the letter is 13th. There's no coincidence that all of these 13s and 6s plus their multiples show up around a type of Satan 
and the Antichrist. Esther 4, 1 through 3. Here we have a picture of the Jews in the tribulation, weeping, mourning, and crying, and yet no relief in sight. There are seven things here connected with their mourning. Rent clothes, sackcloth and ashes, crying with a loud and bitter cry, great mourning, fasting, weeping, and wailing. Esther 4 8, just to mention here about the authority of the king's letter. The copy reproduced and sent out from the king is just as reliable as the original paper and ink penned by the king. Amen, right there. King James 16 11 is just as authoritative as the original words penned by the original authors. Amen. Esther 4.11, the golden scepter is a picture of the divine grace, which allows someone, though unworthy as I, to enter into the presence of royalty. The scepter is extended for a short while yet. Don't miss your chance to kneel in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and be accepted in the beloved. Amen. Esther, on the third day, and I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Esther, on the third day, Esther puts on her royal apparel. Amen. The third day, 2,000 years of the church age. On the third day, she puts on a royal apparel. All right, all right. And she stands in the inner court of the king's house and over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the king's house over against the gate of the king's house. Where is the king's house? In Jerusalem, of course. And the king here is the type of God the Father. And in verse 2, she, who is a type of Israel, obtains favor in his sight. Esther 5, 11-13. Haman reveals his haughty and proud heart. He is of his father, the devil. See uh, Isaiah 14, 13, for the five I wills of Lucifer that caused his fall from above the throne of God as the covering cherubim. There are seven per personal references in verse 11 that he spoke of himself. He is really full of himself. I, 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 me, me, me. Amen. Esther 5.14, the word gallows appears eight times in the Bible in seven verses, and then they are all located right here in Esther and only in the book of Esther. Esther 6, 7, and 8, there are seven things here that Haman suggests to be done to the man whom the king wishes to honor, thinking all the while that he is the one whom the king would choose to honor, but it backfires on him, and he winds up doing for his enemy, Mordecai, what he wanted done for himself. He said, bring the king's royal apparel, the king's horse, crown, noble prince, array the man, and lead him through the city and proclaim before him. Esther 7, 8, as the word went out of the king's mouth, just as we see in Revelation. Esther 8, 1, 1 and 2, this is a picture of the Jews being restored to their fullness. Here, the Jews are given all the possessions of their enemies and are exalted to prominence, as will happen in the millennium. Esther 8. 8 and 9. For your information, this is the longest verse in the King James Bible. It has 90 words and contains every letter of the English alpha alphabet except Q, X, and Z. Esther 8, 15 
through 17 is a picture of the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Jews had seven things in the victory of Mordecai. Light, gladness, joy, honor, a feast, a good day, and converts. Esther 9 is the longest chapter in the book with 32 verses. Esther 9.10, the ten sons of Haman are hanged just as the ten kings under the Antichrist are destroyed at the second advent. Esther 9.26-32, seven verses, we have the confirmation of the establishment of the feast days called Purim. This is a feast that is a celebration of the miracle of God's deliverance of the Jews in captivity from extinction. The first use of the word authority is in verse 29 and is used in connection with a writing to confirm the words of the king to the Jews. God has a letter of authority that he has sent to the world and that letter is the King James A.V. 1611 Holy Bible. And just by happenstance, the first use of the word authority in the New Testament is found in Matthew 7.29, which said, For he, Jesus, taught words uh, them as one having authority and not as the scribes. God lends his full authority, power, preservation, and protection upon his letter, even to the greatest degree that any earthly king could lend. In the millennium, the millennial kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, the law of God will proceed from David's throne in Jerusalem, where the Lord Jesus Christ will be in complete dictator control of this earth, and he will speak with utmost authority and rule this world with a rod of iron. And finally, Esther chapter 10. These three verses are a picture of the once and for all time exaltation of the Lord Jesus Christ and show how the world will wind up with a happily ever after ending when Christ returns to the earth and is accepted by his brethren. The king makes a declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, who's a type of Jesus, and causes a tribute to be paid to Mordecai from all the isles of the seas. This is a picture of those Gentiles in the millennium who will bring gifts to Jerusalem to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. We see this in several places in the scripture. For example, when the Mag Mag Magi in Matthew 2, 1 brought gifts to the Christ child in Bethlehem, when Abraham gave tithes uh, to the king priest Melchizedek, who reigned in Jerusalem, uh, there have only been two kings that made a decree for Israel to return to the land, Cyrus, the king of Persia, and in recent history, England's King George V. The same King Hasuerus contains 13 letters. Amen. Well, that was real interesting and uh, just a beautiful picture of the pre-millennial layout that God has woven all through the King James, excuse me, all through the King James Bible, all through the Word of God, uh, God's pattern, uh, premillennial layout, uh, the everything can be seen over and over again in figure and type, and that was a real blessing. And I saw a couple things I didn't know in there. So, Amen. Uh, God bless you, and uh, we'll see you again in the next one.